In this section, we will talk about optimization. With respect to business calculus, optimization most usually means that we need to either maximize our profit or we need to minimize our cost. So maximum or the minimum, remember they occur when the slope of the tangent line is equal to zero. That's when we get a maximum or a minimum. Slope of the tangent line is also given by f prime of x. So this, this is when we have a maximum, this is when we have a minimum. But in either case, at the maximum and the minimum, the slope of the tangent line at that point is going to be equal to zero. So let's do some review real quick. The relative maximum or minimum of a function occur when f prime of x, f prime of x is the slope of the tangent line at x is equal to zero, or when f prime of x is undefined. The rate of change at x equals c is given by f prime of c. Marginal profit, marginal profit, it's the rate at which profit is changing. So is profit increasing or decreasing as you produce the next item? Uh, the marginal profit is given by p prime of q. Profit is revenue minus cost. And given the, the demand p of x, where p is a price per unit and x is the number of units sold, the revenue is equal to x times p of x. Now in this section, it's very important to remember which, which, what each of these variables represents. So x represents the number of units and p of x represents the price. Okay, let's take a look at an example. The function p of x equals to negative 2.25x squared plus 1800x minus 9500 gives a profit when x units of a certain product are sold. So let's keep this in mind. x is equal to the number of units of the product that are sold. So part A, find the profit when 95 units are sold. You would put this function into decimals or into a calculator and you want to find p of 95. P is just the total profit, not the rate at which profit is changing, but simply the total profit. So the total profit when 95 units are sold is $141,193.75. Now the word average, it means we take the total profit and divide, them by, divide it by how many units are giving us that profit. Okay, so the average profit, this is going to be the total profit divided by the number of units. So our total profit is $141,193.75, and we get this total profit when 95 units are sold. So if we divide this, um, then we're going to get the um, average profit per unit is 1486.25 at 95 units. Because remember, when 96, 97, 190 units are sold, um, the, the, the rate at which profit is increases or decreases is going to change. So this average rate is only up to 95 units sold. This is 1486.25 per unit. Next, find the rate that the profit is changing when exactly 95 units are sold. So rate at which profit is changing, it means when 95 units are sold, is the profit increasing or is it decreasing when we produce a 96th unit? So the rate that the profit is changing is given by P prime of X. If you multiply two times negative 2.25, that's going to be negative 4.50 X. And then over here, we get plus 1800. This is the first derivative of the profit function. P prime of 95, if you plug this into our first derivative, uh, this will equal to 1372.50. So this means when we produce a 96th unit, our profit will increase by 1372.50. Okay, so this means when we produce the 96th unit, our profit increases by 1372.50.
letter D. Find the rate that the profit changes on average. Now, this is the key word here. In part C, we just want to find the rate at which profit is changing when exactly 95 units are sold. We want to now know the rate at which profit is changing on average when the number of units sold goes from 95 to 190. So this refers to the average rate of change. We, we talked about this way back in chapter one. The average rate of, rate of change is f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1. In other words, this is basically the slope. This is how much the rate is changing on average between 95 and 190 units. So we know what our x1 and x2 are. x1 is 95, x2 is 190. To find the average, to find the total profit when 95 units are sold, we know that from part A, it's equal to 141, 193.75. And notice that we plug this in to the profit function because we want to find the total profit, not the marginal profit. Um, so, uh, X2 is 190, so we want to find the profit when 190 units are sold. So if we plug this in, this will give us 251275. All right, now, if you want to find the average rate of change when the production is increased from 95 to 190, uh, we would take y2 minus y1, or f of x2 minus f of x1. This is 251, 275, divided by uh, minus, so that's f of x2 minus f of x1, which is 141, 193.75 f of x2 minus f of x1 divided by x2 minus x1, which is 190 minus 95. Put this all in a calculator, and this will give us 1158.75. So a positive rate of change, it means that we can keep producing, because over this interval, our profit is increasing on average. E. Find the number of units sold when the profit stops increasing and starts decreasing. So now we want to find the rate at which profit is increasing, which is the first derivative. First derivative is equal to negative 4.50x plus 1800. That's the rate at which profit is increasing. So as long as the profit is increasing, we can keep producing. But now we want to figure out when does profit stop increasing and stop decreasing. Remember, that's going to occur when the rate of change is zero. When we get a horizontal tangent line, that means our profit went from increasing to now decreasing. So we will take our first derivative, which gives us the slope of the tangent line, and we would set this equal to zero. If we solve that equation, we would get x equals to 400. So at 400 units, our profit goes from increasing to decreasing. So why would you produce more than 400 units if our profit is going to decrease? So this is the, the production level that we want to achieve. Another example. Suppose a company's revenue function is given by R of Q is equal to negative Q to the third plus 320Q squared, and its cost function is given by 130 plus 10Q, which where Q is hundreds of units produced, while R of Q and C of Q are in total dollars of revenue and cost, respectively. A. Find a simplified expression for the marginal profit. Before we can find the marginal profit, we need to find out what the total profit is. So profit, well, sorry, this is in terms of Q. So P of Q, if I can erase this. So profit when Q units are sold, this is equal to the revenue minus the cost. Okay, the revenue function is negative Q to the third plus 320 Q squared minus the cost, which is 130 plus 10q. We would distribute the negative, combine our like terms, write this in, um, in descending order. 
this will give us negative q to the third plus 320q squared minus 10q minus 130. That is the total profit. We want to find the marginal profit. Marginal profit is p prime of q. Um, if you multiply, if you bring the negative three, the 3 down, we get negative 3q squared. 2 times 320, this will be 640. So plus 640q, and then uh, minus 10. This is the marginal profit. How many items in hundreds need to be sold in order to maximize profit? Now remember, if this is our profit function, our maximum profit is going to occur here when the slope of the tangent line is zero. Slope of the tangent line is given by the first derivative. So we would take our first derivative, which is negative 3q squared plus 640q minus 10, and set it equal to zero. Now you could use a quadratic formula, but I recommend graphing it and seeing where this hits the uh, hits, hits the x-axis. And q is going to be 213.318. So approximately 213 units. So at approximately 213 units, our profit function will be maximized. And then the directions in MyOpenMath say to round to two decimal places. I'm not sure why, because normally we can't produce 0.31 of a unit, but you know, go with what the directions say. Here's another example. Given the cost function c of x equals to 3450 plus 590 plus 0.5 x squared, and the demand function p of x equals to 1770, find the production level that will maximize profit. Well, first of all, if we want to maximize profit, we have to know what our profit function is. Our profit function, p of x, is given by the revenue minus the cost. We know what the cost is. The cost is 3450 plus 590x plus 0.5x squared. But we don't know what the revenue function is. But here's what we do know. The revenue function, this is equal to the price demand function times the quantity, price times quantity. So this is 1770 times x or 1770x. So our revenue function will be uh, given by 1770x. If we simplify this, then our profit function we have, I'm going, to go, I'm going to go and order the negative distributes. So we have a negative 0.5x to the second power. Uh, then we have a 1770 minus 590, which will give us plus 1180x minus 3450. That's our profit function. To maximize profit, maximum profit occurs when the slope of the tangent line or the first derivative is equal to zero. So now we take this and set it equal to zero. Solve this using whatever method you want. Again, I recommend graphing. And we're going to get that x equals to 1180 units. So at 1180 units, we are going to maximize our profit.